Let it rip. We didn't know what we were getting into uh, when we started writing, and especially when we started to make the record. There was no pressure to uh, make a record, any kind of record, and we didn't know if it was going to be we we're going to release it or if anyone was going to listen to it or like it. Uh, and that's a really, really great place for an artist to be. It really frees you up uh, to do whatever you want to do, whatever you feel like doing, and. When you're really doing it out of love at this point. Hearing these songs was a bit of a lifeline for me personally, which is why I think I was so drawn to it and I just knew it needed to be recorded because if it was going to do that for me, I'm sure it was going to do it for somebody else. When you find people that you're completely in sync with on an artistic level, it doesn't matter where you come from or what your experiences are in life or what age you are, all of that disappears and, and that's a magical moment. Don't turn away, I want to feel a part of something true and real, something words cannot explain. When I first started performed live between Anana and David on stage together singing the songs, it was any uh, notion that there was two voices happening kind of went away, it just became one sound and I think it actually spoke to the, the concept of the record in a way of this, you know, this sense of lost time or timelessness where there was two voices that were very clearly from different generations and different parts of the world and yet there was a central truth that lyrically was, was pretty obvious, but also you I feel like you feel that in a very visceral way. You'll be glad to hear That pain is now receding The doctors say they're pleasantly So it'll sound like kind of like a bop thing. This one thing where he goes in between the verses where he plays his thing. This one where he goes. It's, you know, just it's simplified and there's another one that's a little more baroque. I had a lot of empathy as a person, first of all, and in, as a writer, in a sense, because I feel like he would really get to know you, kind of study you, in a sense, and get sort of to the bottom of your soul, and the lyric suggestion and the flow of ideas would be sort of on a deeper level. And that's just me realizing that in retrospect, because uh, at the time it was just, you know, free-flowing information, exchange of ideas, musical as well as um, lyrical and it just it happens through like telling your personal stories and you know talking about films you like or books we've been reading uh, philosophy religion all these subjects and but it it happens naturally when you're working with a with a writer of that caliber it was a feeling that you were part of something truly special that's what I felt every time we would sit down to write a song. Even when we would talk about heavy subjects and we would write about heavy subjects and never felt sad or hard and just 
It was just an incredibly joyful experience. Well, I don't sound an honor. There's one, there's one where it goes, uh, one version goes, uh, do you want to blindfold to the captain of the guard, to the soldier who was condemned to die, the prisoner uh, shook his head and gave a little smile, and the other one it's reverses the prisoner soldier thing. Do you want a blindfold, said the captain of the guard, to the prisoner who was condemned to die. The soldier shook his head and he gave a little smile. First time I heard the uh, world we used to know, I listened to the entire song and said, you can't do this in Nashville. Uh, this is one of the best things I've ever heard David Olney do, and uh, this is that's my memory. It's like, wow, you're not going to get somebody from Nashville to make something like this. It's good. Uh, you know, I'm kind of, I don't know if these are matching up as far as the, when the special effects come in, the machine gun and all that stuff, so they might be different lengths. Is that going to be a problem? There is an outro to the world we used to know where it gets really intense with the bumping sounds and the sirens and electric guitars and synth and strings and it was David's idea. We were, I remember when we were, we were cutting a demo of it in our bedroom and we, we got to that part and David got really excited and he timed every single bombing sound that was coming in and sirens and he was like Pff, Pff, and this is where it's gonna go. Trees turn to skeletons and they melt with the dawn. Who is the enemy? I don't know anymore. Who is the enemy? I don't know anymore. Who is the enemy? I don't know. Nobody could predict that this would be a posthumous record. It was it was a start of something new that I think we we're all very excited about. We couldn't bring ourselves to listen to these songs for quite a while after everything that happened. And when we did, it was during a global pandemic and we're stuck at home and we're listening to these lyrics and we couldn't explain it. But at the time when we were writing, it didn't seem weird. We, we weren't questioning any of it. It didn't seem strange that we were talking about quarantine or a plague in the 15th century or a hunchback that refused to ring his bell while a magician made his assistant disappear but could never bring her back. All of it seemed to fit in this, in this world that we unintentionally created. The last train has left the station the ship has sailed to sea. This city's under quarantine. And I can never leave. The streets are filled with ghosts. They whisper in the dark How a wise man can read your mind But a fool can break your heart 